Good morning everyone, Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. Welcome back to the channel. So I've got a consumer unit change for you today as I know that my audience do enjoy seeing a good old consumer unit change. This is a Hager RCBO SPD board supplied very generously by Gillek. So thanks to Gillek for sending that over for me. Um, I'll put a link in the description for Gillek's website where you can find some great prices on consumer units and loads of other electrical equipment. Um, so I'm gonna be taking out this old MK board. So let me show you. By the way, my lighting is not gonna be great today because I've just got my Petzl head torch. Um, usually I, I use my uh, LED lens, the one which is super bright, and I've got a uni light as well that I work with all the time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, today we're gonna to have to just make do with this because I just left it charging at home and I forgot to bring it. I'm going to flip the camera around and show you the board that we've got here and then tell you about what I'm going to be doing. So this is the existing board. We've got an MK old 16th edition board, main switch, some MCBs for the lighting circuits, a bell transformer in there in the middle, and then RCD section for the sockets and shower. Uh, it is a TNS system. So we've got the main earth there coming off the sheath of the supply cable. We've got a 60 amp main uh, fuse here, 16 mil tails, Henley block, which I'm going to come off with some new tails running into the new consumer unit, and I'm just going to mount it in the same kind of place as the existing one. We do have a main bond there to the gas already, the gas meter is just over here, so that's fairly straightforward. And the water is already uh, plastic incoming water main, so we don't need to bond that. So I'm going to get this one off the wall do a bit of a time lapse on that, and then I'm going to start mounting the new Hager board. I'll show you, um, actually I'll get that open now and I'll show you what I'm going to be putting up. So in here, we have the package from Gilbert. Interestingly enough, I was like, how do you pronounce it? Is it Gilbert or Gilbert? It is Gilbert because the family who set it up were the Gilberts. So it's um, Gilbert as in Gilbert Electrical. And they have nice um, biodegradable cushion packaging, which I always approve of. So we've got here some Hager Mini RCBOs, which are absolutely great. They're really compact. These are the ADA series. Um, 32 is obviously the rating, so the number changes based on the rating but they're mini RCBOs with no functional earth lead needed. So they've only got a neutral lead on them, which is great. So I've got a load of RCBOs. They've sent me some blanks as well, which is really good. I like these blanks because they actually clip into the dim rail. So they're a proper job. They don't just fall out when you nudge them or anything like the little clip in surface um, blanks so that's really good and this is something new for me now I think Hager have said that they're going to be putting these in a standard now but this is a cable clamp uh, for the tails so that you can clamp the tails as they go into the main switch so that's a great little uh, piece that I'm going to look forward to installing today for the first time I do do a lot of Hager consumer units because basically they are the best quality out there on the market now they're not cheap uh, you know not cheap by any means but they are fantastic quality and they're really nice to fit so this is the consumer unit uh, it comes with a little tails entry plate here so you can fit two 25 mil tails in a 16 mil earth uh, and that just clips in. They have these kind of rectangular knockouts rather than circular ones. You've got a label sheet here, and what I like about these is the labels are really good quality. They've just revamped their labeling system, and they even have labels now for EV chargers, for example, like here, you've got vehicle charger. So that's really useful for me as I do a lot of EV charging installs. Um, so here is the board and the part number on, on this, it's quite a big one. Let me just show you the 
part number is uh, VML 118 SPD. So it's uh, an 18 way, 18 usable ways with a built in SPD and a 100 amp main switch. So it's designed for an RCBO setup. And this is the Hager design range. I think it's the design 10. And as you can see, they look pretty nice. Solidly built, and you've got a main switch and an SPD built in here. The buzz bar is already mounted into the main switch. So that's really handy, and all you have to do is just clip in the RCBOs and then wire it up. There are these rectangular knockouts at the top, which you can get cable entry um, plates for but you can also just put some grommet strip around. For me, I've got this trunking coming down into the top, so what I'm gonna do hopefully is reuse the existing trunking that comes down and bring the cables top entry uh, for the most part, and then probably bring the tails in the, in the bottom right-hand side here, but we'll see how it goes. So once again, thanks to Gillek for that, and uh, looking forward to fitting this and seeing how it goes in. Another nice little thing which is new for these Hager boards is they put the torque settings here on the lid now, which is great. So I've got my Vera torque screwdriver, which I'm gonna be using, and I know exactly what my torque settings need to be now, which is fantastic. So we have done an EICR on this already, just to check the readings on all the circuits and make sure that it didn't actually need rewiring. Because <laughs> there's always a risk when you do a consumer unit change that you start testing it out and then you realize that the, the wiring is actually completely shot and you can't reuse the existing wiring. And then it turns from a, a job that was gonna cost you know a few hundred pounds to a job which is gonna cost a few thousand pounds to re rewire the place. So fortunately in this property, the, the, um, the wiring's okay for the most part. There we go. Um, there was a little bit of VIR cable that we found in one or two places, so we're gonna rewire those small parts. But in general, the wiring's not too old, as you can see from the consumer unit here. So we should be able to reuse most of it. VIR, by the way, stands for um, Vulcanized Indian Rubber, or some people call it VRI, Vulcanized Rubber Insulated. It's basically a rubber cable that after 50 years or however old it is now, it just starts to crumble and it's really dangerous. It can be quite a fire hazard. Um, so in terms of circuits here, we've got cooker here. Then we've got immersion heater, which I believe is not actually in use anymore. Um, boiler, light downstairs. Oh, sorry, I've done that wrong. Cooker, water, uh, immersion heater, boiler, lights upstairs, lights downstairs, bell transformer, RCD. Then we've got shower in the ensuite. Uh, we've got a socket circuit, which does the bedrooms, the landing. We've got another socket circuit, which does the kitchen utility and garage. Another one for kitchen sockets, and then another one which does the study lounge master bedroom. So four ring circuits basically throughout the house, which is quite good. I mean, it is gonna be an eight bedroom house, but four rings is quite good for a house of this size. It's not actually a massive house, this. It's just that they're gonna basically use every single room possible as a bedroom in order to maximize the income on this because it's a HMO house of multiple occupation. So basically each room is gonna be rented individually by a different person. Um, this is a bit of a funny little trunking setup here. I'm just gonna pull that off and yeah, it's not really, it's a bit of a bodge that. So I'm gonna to have to try and figure out what to do there to make that neat because I don't really like the fact that the cables are all going behind that gas pipe but I don't really see much of a way around it either, to be honest. Let me know in the comments what you would do on that. 
Um, gonna have to figure out something. So I'm gonna just start taking this down, pulling all the old wiring out, labeling everything up as I go so that I know what circuit, what cables do what circuit, and I can keep track of everything. And then once the old board's out, I'm gonna tidy all the cables, make them neat, figure out how to get them into the new board, and then mount the new board up and start wiring in to the new board. The uh, main fuse has already been cut. The seals have already been cut before, so it's not sealed. So I can just pull that and um, that will isolate the whole board for me. Obviously safe isolation is very important. So I'm gonna go through and just check, prove that this is dead before I start working. And then I can start stripping everything out. And one thing we do usually as well with these is just take the main fuse out of the carrier and then put the carrier back in. Otherwise you've got these live terminals here which are accessible which someone could accidentally poke their finger in or if a piece of wire just slings down from the consumer unit and pops in there that could be an issue so for safety reasons we just take the fuse out of this so it's dead carrier essentially and then we put it back in just to close up that fuse holder so for those of you who haven't seen these any uh, before this is what they look like so basically that is just a plastic carrier for the fuse. And then there's a screw that goes in here, which I've just undone, which means that you can then open this up like that. And inside you've got this BS88 or BS1361 fuse, uh, which is held by these little copper rings. And in order to loosen it up, you can just undo these screws here just loosen them slightly so that it releases the clamping on the fuse and then the fuse will just drop out. Just need to loosen that a little bit more. That's it. So this is a 60 amp. It's quite an old one. It's probably original. And um, it's got a little bit of tar on there or something maybe something's been leaking out of the old fuse carrier before but apart from that it looks in fairly good condition so this is the main fuse that protects the whole installation which means if there's an issue uh, this well it doesn't protect the whole installation as such it protects the supplier's cable down there so that if something major blows in the consumer's installation this fuse blows and it will protect that supplier's cable from melting or blowing up or whatever it might do. So now what I can do is close this up like that and then just put this back in the carrier so that those live terminals are sealed and not going to be able to accidentally touch those. So as I say, safe isolation is really important. So what we're gonna do is just check our tester to make sure that the tester is working okay. And this is using my QTEC proving unit, the QProof 3. Then I'm gonna check between live conductors. So live to neutral, neutral to earth, live to earth and that's all dead and then we check our tester again to make sure that the tester hasn't packed up in between and that's all working fine so we can now be confident that this is dead and we can start work without any fear of getting an electric shock
Right, so I've got that board off now, and it looks like most of these cables have got some slack on them, which is good. So I can actually pull those down a little bit. I think I'm going to cut these trunkings off level with the top of that box, uh, of that board, and then put the new consumer unit at that level. These cables, there's not a lot we can do to avoid them going behind the gas pipe, but what we can do is just clip them neatly so that they're not actually touching the gas pipe. So I'm going to just open that ceiling up a little bit and then clip them all neatly down in a row. Um, and then just take them into the top of the board with some compression glands so that the top surface of the board is still IP rated. Um, some of them were kind of doubled up in the, MC, in the uh, existing MCB, so I'm going to try and separate some of these out into radials as well, so that we've got uh, rings and then the extra cable coming off will be a 16 amp radial. So that will just um, tidy things up a little bit. Yeah, so I'm just going to start tidying all these up first, uh, get the board mounted and start putting everything in. So as usual, this is getting more complicated than I expected. So basically up here, the wires, the cables aren't that long. They're long enough to go to a board just below that gas pipe there, but it's not ideal because there's not really room to put trunking on top of the board and then put compression glands and things like that. So I'd end up doing a bit of a bodge job if I put it there. So what I've decided to do is actually bring it down to here I'm going to put an IP box up there with connectors in and then extend all the cables down to here, run a nice neat trunking down and do it all properly. I've got to sort these cables out as well. There was a double socket there, but that is, it was all a bit of a mess. There's a spur coming off, going down through into the kitchen there. There was another spur coming off down into the kitchen there. And then this is one leg of the ring and that's the other leg of the ring. So I've got to sort those out, extend them to the new consumer unit. There's this cable as well, which is going off there. I'm gonna to have to sort that out. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to, off to. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna try and do this all properly and neatly, rather than trying to fit it up here and it being a bit too tight. Right, so I've gone home and got my uni light work light because it was doing my head in working in the dark. And uh, as you can see, that's much better. I can actually see what I'm doing now. So I've got this IP box. Back there, right. I've got this box here. So what I'm gonna do is put that up here with DIN rail mounted connectors and then I'm going to basically extend all of those cables, run a trunking down here where my thumb is into the top of the consumer unit and run everything down from there. So that's the plan. I'm just going to drill the holes in here now, put compression glands in and then um, start working the cables into it, mount it up and get that on the wall cables to go up in the top of here so what I'm going to do is just measure this out properly so that I can kind of evenly space the cable entries so that it looks nice and neat and everything fits properly. Right so I've drilled all these holes out 15 holes for 15 cables and now I'm going to start putting these compression glands in so jump to time lapse. So 
So now that we've got our comp compression glands all in, we've got to mount a piece of DIN rail along here. So what I'm going to do is mount the DIN rail on, on here, and then we can clip our DIN rail connectors into that. So I've got a length of DIN rail here, but it comes in like a meter length, so we've got to cut it short. So I'm just going to measure it pretty much long enough to span the entire width of the box. And then I'll, I'll cut it here, mark it up with my permanent marker, which is not working very well. There we go. And then I'm going to cut that with my multi-tool. Okay, so I was using the wrong multi-tool blade and it's just completely trashed my multi-tool. Well, not my multi-tool, but the, the blade. So I'm just gonna do it with a hacksaw. Okay, so now that I've cut my dim rail to length, I'm just going to fix it down into this plastic box and to do that I'm going to use these little very short screws with a washer. There is this slot in the middle of the box and that just enables you to, to put a, a screw straight into the plastic and it'll just hold the dim rail in place. and tight now and in the right place. So I've got my trunking here and what I've done is I've measured where it needs to go and then I've just drawn a line a little bit on the inside. So I'm gonna butt the trunking up to it and then cut a slightly smaller hole on the inside here so that the hole here is just slightly smaller than the size of the trunking to give kind of a, uh, a grommet edge so that um, it's properly sealed and then I'll silicon it around it afterwards. So I'm going to just cut that open with my multi-tool and then start mounting the connectors. Okay, so now the box is prepared. What I'm going to be using is the Vargo DIN mountable connectors. And they just click in to the dim rail, like that. And then you can mount the Vargo connectors in them. So they're designed for these push fit connectors. And then they just go like that. So it's a nice, neat way to put in a load of Vargo. So you can have the small two-way ones like that, so I can actually do two cables in this one. Or for the big cables like this, up to six millimeter squared, we can use the big red ones. And um, that should do a nice, neat job, hopefully.
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got enough to do two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen cables. So I'll have one set spare here, but that'll do the trick. And then all the outgoing cables will come down here into the trunking, down the trunking into the DB. the cables dressed down into this box now so they've all gone in nicely and they're all long enough I'm going to strip them back a little bit where needed put all the um, cut all the wires to the right length put earth sleeving on the earths uh, this one here I'm gonna I'm not sure what I'm gonna do that with that one yet I might just take it down and bring it in the side here or I might just put a, a normal Vargo box up there and then extend it down and come across and, and um, into the bottom of the consumer unit, something like that. Uh, I need to extend these as well. So I'm gonna put new earth cables on these. Uh, this one, I think what I might do actually is put an earth block just on the wall here uh, and then run them into there and then run 116 mil from there down to the consumer unit or to another earth block next to the consumer unit, something like that. So yeah, I'm gonna start dressing these in now and get them terminated. consumer unit mounted onto the wall now and all I'm trying to do now is the trunking. I've got this flat 90 here which I wanted to put in there but actually what happens if I do that is it raises the trunking up slightly and so there's a bit of a gap. Um, so it would end up, the trunking would be like that and there would be about um, five mil gap, which is not ideal. So what I'm thinking to do is just actually not use this bend, just lay it flat on there like that. And then just do a kind of a mitre joint here so that I get a neat angle. Uh, it's a little bit more tricky, but at least that will avoid the the gap because that gap will kind of compromise the IP rating of the top surface. I mean, the other thing I could do is do it with the 90 and then just silicon it in so that it's all sealed off anyway. But I'm not sure really what's the best option. Let me know in the comments what you guys would do. Right, so I decided to go with the 90 degree angle here because it's just going to look neater actually when i put the lid on it's going to bend that down slightly so there will only be a very small gap which i can then fill in with silicon 
And then in terms of fixings, I've just used these penny washers to get a nice solid fixing. So I'm just gonna measure a bit now up here, just to put that piece in, fix that onto the wall. Then I can start getting the cables between the two boards. I've used the Hager grommet strip that comes with the boards here. The only thing is I did run out, so I've used some normal grommet strip there. Um, and that one, I've, I've knocked it open, but um, it's not actually gonna be used. So all the cables will come in to these five cable entries here. So yeah, getting there. Right, so I've got my consumer unit mounted, trunking pieces mounted now. So what I'm gonna do is get the RCBOs in here, all fitted out so I know where each one's going. And then I'm gonna start getting cables in between and then do all the connections. So next step. So these Hager RCBOs are really smart looking things. And one thing I really like about them is this. So you've got this um, DIN rail clip, but it doesn't just like come down a tiny bit and then you have to leave it out. It stays down like that. And then you can easily take the whole thing off. And what it means is that you can actually put it on even if the buzz bar is still in place. So for example, if I wanted to, if that buzz bar was, was fixed in and I wanted to just replace this 16 for a, a six amp or something, I wouldn't need to unscrew the whole buzz bar, turn the power off and all that. All I would need to do is unscrew this one, lever this latch down, and then you can actually take the whole thing out while the buzz bar is still in place and connected to all the other circuit breakers. So it's a really nice little feature that, as far as I'm aware, that no other manufacturers have. Um, and uh, all in all, these are really nice quality. Now you'll notice this one is slightly different. That is a 40 amp. So this is for the electric shower. And the 40 amp ones, they don't do in a mini RCBO yet. Um, and so it does have a functional earth that will need to be connected as well. And with these, um, I did a consumer unit video a while ago where I actually sleeved these green and yellow, but you're not supposed to. According to the wiring regulations, functional earth color is cream, just like that. So that is how it should be. It shouldn't have any earth sleeving over it, uh, but it will just go and connect into the earth bar along with the earth from the circuit itself. These SPDs, um, are pre-wired into the board, so you don't need to do anything. They have these crimps, which are crimped onto the main outgoing side of the main switch, and then this cable that just loops up, and an earth cable also, which comes out of the earth terminal, and is already pre-wired and connected into the earth bar there. So they're quite nice and easy, you don't need to do any alterations. You don't need to do any wiring, you just put them in. And they have inbuilt overcurrent protection, so they don't need an MCB to protect them because the overcurrent protection for these is built into the device itself. I'm just going to start by connecting these earth tails into the various, uh, I'm sorry, these neutral tails into the various neutral terminals. And you don't need to use ferrules on these because they're already kind of stamped, so it's not necessary to use ferrules. Some people like to do it, I know, but I don't think there's any point in this kind of situation. So. Just goes like that. This functional earth, I'm going to tie that across now so that I don't forget. It's not very long actually, but it's long enough.
So for these ones, it's probably worth putting ferrules on because they are fine, uh, quite thinly stranded. So I'm gonna put ferrules on these ones and it's just a 2.5 mil tail, I believe, on those. Okay, so I've just done those connections up loosely and I'm going to go over it with my Torx screwdriver later on. But I just wanted to loosely connect all those. And then I'm going to start putting the cables in here now and running them into the connector blocks upstairs. So I'm going to get the 6mm in here first for the shower. So that's going to go into this 40 amp RCBO here. Um, and then I'm just going to work my way along. So I'm starting with the heaviest cables first, and then I'm going to work my way along to the end. take the incoming cable down, loop it around and into the terminals and then out uh, and out the bottom there. So I'm going to do the same with this one. This one's for the cooker. I'm just going to tuck that in like that, loop it over to one side and that way everything should be fairly neat. There's enough of a gap in between each of these to just do a little loop and uh, that, that should keep it nice and tidy and and looking good because obviously there's a lot of cables going in there so I have to be careful to keep it neat and enable future maintenance to be as easy as possible as well. Although these are maintenance free connections, uh, you know if ever anyone needs to change anything it should be as easy as possible to access and make changes to the connections. getting there now um, cables going in it takes uh, quite some time to do it neatly but I'm getting there bit by bit but I just forgot about the um, tails clamp so I was like okay how do I fit that and then I noticed that there's a little bit of a design flaw on these because the mounting um, holes for the cable um, 
gripper, whatever you call it, cable clamp for the tails is actually behind the SPD because that's where the, S the main switch usually is. But they've not changed that on the SPT PD board, so you can't actually mount this behind the main switch. So it's a bit, a bit silly, really. It's the first thing um, I've actually ever found wrong with a Hager board. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd mention it, and um, maybe if Hager watches this, they'll sort it out. Right, so we're nearly there now. So all the cables are in, connected up in the wire goes down in the trunking, down into the consumer unit. Um, fairly happy with how it's worked out. I'm not really happy with this. Uh, it looks like a disaster. Um, it's just, there's no real nice way to, to do it neatly, unfortunately. I tried as best as I could, but because of the fact that the wires are going in like that instead of in at the top with what you, what you would have with normal DIN rail screw connectors, it just makes it a lot more difficult to get them neat. So I've tried to sort of loop them over each time, but <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit of a mess. Hey ho, it's all gonna be hidden in the box and it'll look nice and neat from the outside. Um, but I'm a bit OCD with stuff like that, so it does wind me up slightly. Cables in here. Uh, just about enough space in the trunking. It's surprising how much space these twin nerds take up, really. And then down into the consumer unit here. So what I'm going to do now is do the tails. I'm going to put a new Henley block on there, new flexi tails in looping in here, underneath and up into the main switch. I've got to extend these bonding conductors. Put, probably put an earth block. Uh, up here somewhere and then just extend the bonding conductors down another main earth block there to loop the main earth into and then I'll be ready to turn it on and call it a day because it's getting it's just hit five o'clock so I reckon I've got another hour before I'm finished right so I'm pretty much there now ready to turn it on Cables are all neatly terminated in the board. Trunking's on, running up to the connection box up there. Everything's clipped down. The bonding, I've extended it and I've just connected it into the board here. And then I've just redone the earth for the main earthing. I've got a new Henley block here for the main tails. So that's done. So um, yeah, gonna get it on and get out of here for today. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you like it? Do you enjoy fitting Hager boards yourself? Have you never tried one but you'd like to now? Let me know in the comments what you think. Tomorrow I'm gonna to be light, uh, labeling it up and uh, then doing a few little finishing touches and then we'll be good to go.